Hi, in this video I am going to talk about what is a weighted least square regression. Uh, you might have heard about what is uh, the ordinary least square regression. Um, this is different from the ordinary least square commonly known as OLS uh, regressions. So we'll see how it is different and uh, in which all cases you need to use the uh, weighted least square in instead of uh, ordinary least square. Uh, well, weighted least square is popularly known as uh, the WLS and the ordinary least square is known as OLS. So we will understand what the difference is between um, ordinary least square and weighted least square. The ordinary least square uh, assumes that there is constant uh, variance in the errors. So we have an error term, right? And we want, uh, we assume that the error term in ordinary least square is uh, having a constant uh, variance, okay? And we call that property as homoscedasticity, uh, homoscedasticity, okay? Uh, or we call the error term to be homoscedastic, right? Uh, if you're familiar with OLS, I'm sure you would have uh, heard, uh, heard about what, what homoscedasticity is. So that is one assumption in OLS. The uh, method of uh, weighted least square um, uh, can be used when ordinary least square uh, assumption of constant variance in the error is violated. Okay, so this is the important point to remember. So you can use uh, WLS in place of OLS when uh, the constant variance assumption um, is violated. So you cannot use OLS uh, if your your error is um, not homoscedastic, right? In that scenario, you can use the WLS. So now it's clear where exactly, what is the fundamental difference between OLS and WLS. I will get into the deeper uh, uh, theory of the differences and we'll understand how we can you know make the best use of WLS when we cannot use uh, OLS okay now the, the scenario when the error uh, term is dot homoscedastic where it doesn't have a constant variance we call that as heteroscedasticity right so whenever we have the heteroscedasticity we uh, need to use um, WLS of course there are other means of getting rid of heteroscedasticity and using homoscedasticity but one of the way is using WLS in 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 uh, instead of OLS and the uh, model that we're considering is this one a simple linear regression model where y is the dependent variable x is the independent variable and um, epsilon is the error term and beta is the, uh, you know, the par set of parameters. Now let's get into a little bit of deeper mathematics. You may not uh, be comfortable with uh, the, you know, the uh, depth of mathematics involved uh, while explaining the difference between OLS and WLS. I'll just give you a brief overview of how uh, estimation is different uh, in OLS uh, than uh, what we do in uh, WLS. Okay, and we all know that uh, epsilon is the error term, and it is assumed to be having a multivariate normal distribution um, with with uh, you know a mean of zero and a constant variance, right? G mean of zero and variance is constant. Okay, now we have this uh, the uh, variance covariance matrix. Uh, with us, okay, and this relates to all the observations in your data sets. Now, with this in mind, we define what is known as a weight of something, okay. So, weight of something or weight of an observation in your data point is defined like this weight is nothing but uh, the reciprocal of its uh, variance, okay. Now, the reason we are talking about a particular observation is because each of these uh, error term is associated with a single observation, right? And it differs, like you have error 1, error 2, and so on, right? So, we defined weight 1 is 1 by sigma 1 square, okay? And sigma is what we have defined here, right? This is sigma, this is sigma 2, and so on. So, this is nothing but the, the variance of the error terms, right? The covariance, of course, are all zero uh, for the errors, right? 
all right so with this in mind let's see the differences in the estimation of OLS and uh, WLS in WLS uh, in weight release square we uh, try to estimate by minimizing the uh, square of the error so sum of the square of the error okay keeping in mind the weights we have defined okay and I'll tell you what the logic behind it okay I'll tell you the formula first and then I'll talk about the logic behind it later on uh, okay so uh, ma mathematically you can find the uh, estimates of the uh, WLS estimates by using this formula now if you uh, if you remember what you have learned in OLS we do not have the W terms in OLS except the except that uh, it's uh, exactly the same as OLS in OLS you find the beta parameters as you know transpose of x uh, multiplied to x and then you know inverse of that and then this multiplied to uh, transpose x multiplied to y now this is what you this is how you find the estimates for um, ordinary least square okay well uh, here we are simply um, adding one more term which is the a vector of uh, you know different weights we defined the vector of weights in the previous slide right that simply we are multiplying that um, here uh, you know multiplying that with the x transpose and x all right so having this in mind and um, with this you know this formula the difference we know in terms of how the formula for uh, calculating beta parameters is different than um, what you use in OLS um, we'll see the intuition behind it. Why do we include a weight parameter here? Okay, uh, the residual sum of square that we minimize is in OLS is nothing but the sum of the square of yi minus xi beta, right? There is a slight change here. We simply multiply the weight vector, and the rest of the uh, you know the expression remains the same. It's the sum of the square of the you know error, which is nothing but y i minus x i beta square, except the fact that we are multiplying with a, a weight parameter, a weight vector w i. Okay, why do we do so? Okay, now let me explain to you what uh, heteroscedastic city is, where you have non-constant variance, right? You have non some you know has high variance, some has low variance, and so on. Now this happens in in areas where you know you have um, you know high variance of some observations and low variance for some of other observations now ideally what do we want we want less variance or constant variance okay whatever variance we have we should have same variance in place right um, so we want uh, the the um, the weight that is given to each one of these observation in the estimation process should be um, weighted rather than equal weight should be Having different weight okay so the one which has the higher of uh, variance should be given the um, lesser weight okay high the variance high the variance uh, low is the weight okay so that's the uh, logic because one ha that has high variance um, is most likely to be you know very very high so it's difficult to predict what exactly the actual value is whereas a variance um, observation having a least variance um, in, in terms of uh, you know uh, observing it uh, is most likely to be somewhere you know uh, somewhere uh, near the mean so we get more weight to that in the estimation process but you know it, if it has high variance it could be this value this big or this small that's bad because you know you will have um, your estimation process in that case will be um, you know erroneous or it is not going to be uh, very accurate uh, if there is a high variation in the observations in that case we give less weight to such observation which has got high variance so this will get less weight whereas this will get uh, a higher weight okay so that's the idea here and that's why we are in ordinary least square irrespective of whether observation has high variance or low variance or error term has high variance or low variance, you will get the exact same weight. 
given to each observations in the estimation process. Whereas in OLS, the uh, weights are given differently. So here, the observation with small error variance has a large weight. If so, small error variance, so this has small error variance, right, smaller one, and we have got higher weight. And the one has higher, uh, you know, uh, variance will get a smaller weight. And the information observation that has large error variance will get a uh, smaller weight. Uh, now the weights have to be known uh, a priori, right, uh, so that you can do the estimation. But not always you will get the weights because when you measure an observation, you actually do not measure the variance many a times. So in the real world, you have to find it uh, in a uh, in a way that is most approximate uh, to the actual scenario. So let's see. So we'll understand uh, how we measure the weight and how do we estimate by taking an example and then it will be more clear. So we'll take an example. Here is the data gelton.txt. Uh, you can find it on net. It's a famous data set that has got, um, you know, same in uh, measurements and we have got x variables and y variables. So what is x variable? It is the diameter of uh, uh, the P uh, in inches uh, of a parent plant. So we have uh, the peanuts, right? So um, we have the diameter uh, of uh, these of a parent plant and the progeny uh, has also uh, seeds right so that diameter is taken as the uh, dependent variable so we're trying to find out how the progeny uh, diameter depends uh, on the uh, parent diameter right um, so we're trying to basically estimate y which is the diameter of the uh, the nut uh, or uh, yeah, the seed from the progeny plant is uh, related to the diameter of the uh, the uh, seed from the parent plant. So this is y, uh, the diameter for progeny, and this is x, the diameter for the parent seed. And we have estimates alpha and beta. So that's exactly what we are trying to do here. Now remember one thing here, we have taken many seeds from, you know, uh, each individual parent. So from each individual parent, we have many progeny, right? So we have different diameters. So when you have different diameter, you can easily get the standard deviation or the variance of it, right? But that's not the luxury in, in each scenario or in each example. So in this example, we have the standard deviation of the offsprings of the progeny, um, you know, uh, the seeds given to us. So the estimation process will be slightly easier in this case. Okay. So let's go ahead with the estimation. The standard deviation reflects the information in the process y. Now we need to remember that y, so we have y and x, right? So y and x, here we have the diameter. Okay? Let's say diameter is uh, 20 millimeter. Okay. Here it is, let's say you know 19 millimeter okay now this 20 meter has been an average of many seats let's say 10 seats you know someone has 19 then 18 17.5 21 21.5 so you take the average of that because each parent has many uh, offspring offsprings right so you take the average of that and that's exactly represents the y value Hence, given that we have several observations, we can always find the standard deviation of that observation or the variance of that observations. So that we can use that as the weight. So that we have the uh, standard deviation for or the offsprings, right? And we can use that as the weight. So what weight is nothing but the reciprocal of the variance, right? So we can easily find the weight and then we can use that in the ordinary least square. We have the formula. We saw that three slides back. So we can use that formula, um, which is nothing but x transpose, you know, weighted uh, weight matrix multiplied to x, you know, whole inverse, and then you multiply it with another set of this expression and find out the beta values. I mean, that's uh, all. It's easy, right? But not always you will have this set of, you know, uh, observation given to you. So experimentally, this is possible, but many times. You want to, don't have that experimental data where you have several observations so that you can uh, go ahead 
with uh, calculating the uh, standard deviation and variance. So the idea is to give uh, downweight the observation with large standard deviation. So we have the standard deviation for each observation for y value and upweight the observation which has got small standard deviations, right? So, you know, logically that's what we need to do in uh, weight, uh, weight and least square. That's what we also learned in the previous slide that based on the standard deviation our weight will differ and that is uh, you know inversely proportional that means the more variance you have the less weight it gets in the uh, estimation process so when you use meditab and we have this uh, regression equation you can use any software r sas spss uh, so he, this is uh, this is the ols this is the WLS uh, regression output and this is the ordinary least square output. So we have used the same data and use different estimation process. So this is OLS and the, uh, the one above is uh, uh, the weighted least square. Uh, you can see that the difference in the estimates, right? Both in the intercept and slope groups. There is a uh, you know significant difference in the uh, slope coefficient at least. So intercept is not very different, but the slope coefficient has a difference. Hence, when you explain the marginal effect, uh, that is that is uh, going to be some change, right? Some difference. So here, WLS is more appropriate because we have found out that variance uh, the of the error terms is not constant throughout. Hence, uh, ordinary least square uh, has a, um, it's not appropriate because the uh, because of the violation of the uh, homoscedasticity assumption. When you do the plot by estimating, you find some difference, okay, slight difference. You can see uh, the two lines here, they're more or less overlapping, but there is some difference. Most of the times you will see that they will be very close, okay. Uh, there won't be much of a difference, but it does make a difference while you, when you explain it. So if you are doing a forecasting of something, that won't make much of a difference. But if you are trying to explain the marginal effect, then it does have uh, a significant difference. For this example, the weights are known. As I have said, the weights are known. But this is this circumstance will not be there always. So how do you find, uh, you know, the weights when the weights are not given explicitly? When you have I observations. Um, which is an, ab uh, an average of n observations. So, let, uh, sorry, uh, the ith response of uh, a data set is an average of n uh, observations. So, variance will be uh, calculated very simply, right? Variance will be nothing but variance divided by ni, and the weight will be proportional to that. So, 1 by ni proportionate will be ni itself. So, that will be the weight, okay? If it is a total of ni observation, if the ith response is a total, it's just a sum of ni observations, then its variance will be simply, uh, you know, the product of all the variances. Okay, here it was average, so we simply divided ni. Here it is the sum, uh, so we just do the product of uh, all the variances. Okay, uh, you know, given the weight, I mean, product of uh, Sorry, the product of the uh, observation, number of observations, the, uh, the variance. And the weight it is exactly the reciprocal, which is 1 by n i. So this is what you need to, uh, you know, um, remember while aggregating the observations, right? So these are additional information. You can always read more about it, how you aggregate observation based on. Like in, a, in our previous example, we saw it is an average of different observations. So the aggregation is average, but it will not be average all the time. It could be sum also. It could be, um, you know, some sort of different uh, uh, weighted average also. So how do you come up with weights when you have weighted average observations? Anyway, we are not going to deeper uh, aspect of it. We will keep it simple and go ahead. So now we have one example where you have the weights already given. We will go ahead with another example where weights are not explicitly uh, given to us. So when that is the case, we need to follow a few steps. Um, okay, before that, a uh, few observations about uh, OLS, sorry, WLS. The weighted least square estimates of the coefficient will usually be same as the ordinary least square. I have already said that OLS estimates will most likely be uh, same as uh, or, uh, 
WLS. Uh, so it doesn't help much in uh, changing the forecast, whereas it helps a lot uh, while explaining the marginal impact. In cases where there is a substantial difference in the OLS and WLS estimates, uh, you should uh, do a scrutiny or should do uh, a more investigation, thorough investigation of the estimation process. And you do it, you should do it uh, more uh, iteratively so that, you know, the estimation, uh, the coefficients will stabilize and that's what we call as iteratively re, uh, re weighted least square. So there's large difference that is a matter of worry because that should not be a large difference between these two kinds of estimates. So in that case, you should iteratively, um, you know, um, uh, estimates uh, the WLS parameters and there will be a time when it will uh, stabilize very close to OLS. In some cases, the value of weights may be based on theory of prior research and this is important. Many times you do research based on what has already been done in your given area. So someone might have taken weights for observations in your previous study. In that case, you can always go ahead with using uh, within the weights that the other researcher has used. But ensure that uh, it is theoretically sound and it has been uh, you know, peer reviewed and published so that you know you can uh, we can always consider the data uh, uh, to be reliable. In design of experiments, when you have, you know, you're doing experiments uh, um, through, through a proper design and you know, design of experiments is, uh, is, 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 is a well-known phenomenon in uh, statistics. A large number of replicates, weights can be estimated directly. So it, if in the scientific experiments, you can always uh, you know, do more experiments to get more observations. Uh, so if you are, you know, doing experiments in botany, chemistry, physics, uh, or engineering um, uh, sciences like civil engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, you can always uh, find multiple observations uh, for the same, um, uh, you know, same uh, observations. And then you can, uh, you know, aggregate it by average weight. Right? So that luxury you have when you are doing scientific experiments. So you can always find the you know standard deviation, variance and then use that as the weight. Uh, okay. So it depends on the weight. Uh, so choosing the weights is the most trickiest thing. And if you are not familiar with weight, it is always go, good to go ahead with the oil earth instead of using wrong weight. So you have to be very careful while using the weight. We'll take another example where weight is not explicitly mentioned. Okay, in that case, how do we use, uh, you know, uh, WLS, right? So here is an example of a house price. Uh, so Y, which is the target or dependent variable, which is the sale price of a home. And X1 and X2 are the independent variables, which is the square footage of home. Um, and then, you know, there is another variable X2, which is also some sort of, feature of, of the uh, you know the house now using x1 and x2 we need to uh, find out how they are related to the price of a uh, home so we use the ordinary least square and we found out the estimates we have the coefficient uh, standard deviation t values p values and so on when you plot the residuals we found that it's it's not uh, uh, firstly it's not random secondly the the error variance is different here it is less but here it is lot more, right? So clearly there is a difference in the error variance, right? It's more conical in state and, you know, it seems that OLS doesn't work because the error variance seems to be uh, non-constant. So how do we go ahead with estimating using OLS? There are five steps to be followed. So first, store the residuals and the fitted values from the ordinary least square. So start with OLS, you know, the way we have done previous slide. Start with OLS, do the estimation using ordinary least square and store the residuals in some variable, okay? Calculate the absolute values of the ordinary least square residuals, right? You can always calculate the absolute value. How do you do that? Just take the modulus, right? You can always find the absolute value. It may not be the negative values all the time, right? Because negative value doesn't mean anything. It's just the difference, right? So it has to be always a positive one. So take the modulus of all the residuals. 
regress the absolute values of the oilless residuals versus the oilless fitted values. So what is fitted value? Your y hat is the fitted value from oilless, and your you know error terms are the um, the absolute value of error term. By the way, do not have to be negative, right? Now you have error terms and you have fitted values of your, your dependent variable. In the third step, what do you do? You regress the absolute values of ordinary square versus the OLS fitted values. So OLS fitted values is y hat and this is your um, error terms. So you regress this as a dependent variable and this as independent variable. Okay. You do the regression. Okay. This with this. Okay, the error terms, absolute value of the error terms, with the fitted value from the ordinary least square. Uh, you might wonder why are we doing this? Well, we are doing this because we want got, we got to, we got to get a more smoother values of uh, the error terms. Okay, that's the idea. Other than that, you know, there is no reason why we do it. It's to get to get a smoother value, and this is what done in many other statistical techniques. So, uh, if you from you can always ask your statistics teacher why we regress uh, the fitted values many a times it is you know more or less to get a few, a smoother uh, uh, values okay um, so this is more like an interpolation uh, or extrapolation uh, type if you're familiar with these concepts you, you would uh, understand it very well okay calculate weights equal to 1 by fit square so whatever the fitted values are estimates of the errors um, now what you do is that um, once you regress, you store the fitted values from this regression. Now, fitted values of regression will be again some sort of okay. Let's call that um, e dash. Okay, and this is again estimate. So we'll use hat. So from this regression, we'll get this error terms. This will be more smoother compared to what we have used here. Calculate the weights equal to one by fit. So this we considered as the standard deviation for each observation. We didn't have standard deviation uh, in the initial data. So using this three step, we calculate the standard deviation and then we use that standard deviation to calculate the weight and weight is nothing but one by, um, you know, the E hat dash square. Okay. So this is the weight and this weight will be used for each observation. And once we have the weight, then it is very simple, right? We already know the formula in this, in, in, in the slides. Earlier to this, we have written the formula. Use that uh, WLS formula and, and find it out. You can always do the estimation through software. You do not have to do all these steps by, on your own, except the fact the first three steps are important. You have to do these first three steps on your own. And then uh, the software itself will do it. And nowadays, it's all automated. Now you don't have to do it on your own. You can use a, a WLS, uh, you know, a, a procedure or function. Uh, in R or SPSS and that will do the, all the steps. So the reason I explain all five steps is for your understanding of theory so that you can always explain how OL, WLS is different from the uh, ordinary least square. Now we have followed uh, the same steps that we uh, explained in the previous slide and we have a different set of uh, estimates this time from WLS. Okay, so this is different. You can compare it with the ordinary least square estimates. When you plot it, you can see the uh, values are a lot different. Now you have more or less constant uh, variance. There is some sort of non-constant at the end, but then you know you can always try it out different weights to avoid that. But most part, it is a constant variance, right? You can see it uh, yourself, and you can compare this graph with your previous OLS graph, where you know the variance was non-constant in nature. Okay, so this is how you. Um, estimate, uh, find out or estimate uh, the OLS, uh, sorry, the WS uh, regression uh, problem. Um, so there are certain points to remember while using uh, WLS. The weighted regression is, n is not an appropriate solution if the heteroscedasticity is caused by omitted variables. Many times, heteroscedasticity problem is um, there in, in your data because of omitted variable, that means you have missed out on an important variable. In that case, weighted least square is not a very suitable, uh, uh, you know, way of um, handling heteroscedasticity. There are other ways to handle it. 
uh, maybe you should go ahead and use the omitted variable right that's the best way um if that's not the case then wls is is, uh, is a good uh, way of handling hydrostaticity determining correct weight is a big challenge okay if it is already given from an experiment that's good otherwise you have to follow the three steps i explained in the previous slides the value uh, based theory i mean i mean when you are uh, using um, um, your literature you are referring to some literature in your area of research you can always take um, you know good weights already used by uh, your uh, previous researchers and if it is a published work it is always reliable to use the weight so give some importance to in the literature in your um, in your uh, area of research thank you so much and if you haven't subscribed to our channel please do subscribe thank you